so yesterday we went over all the sections of basic chemistry basic mm. concepts of chemistry yes. the importance of chemistry nature of matter states of matter classification of matter properties of matter and their measurement and the measurement of physical properties and the international system of unit yes. and uh, okay and then we also went over the description of the analytical balance mm -hmm. also saw the mass of a substance and the weight yeah weight is a force exerted by gravity on yeah. an object yeah. and uh, the gravity also would vary in a moving object uh, different places ah uh, in by case by case and uh, volume mm -hmm. okay we also briefly touched upon the density mm -hmm. okay and uh, graduated measuring devices mm -hmm. Right, so it's already marked, and so it is kind of we just uh, we can use it quickly. Basically, the usability is yeah. greatly improved. Mm. The graduated marks and so basically using the formulas and using the shapes and uh, the volume of the apparatus, those are designed. Right, like those are yeah. designed and marked. Mm. Practical application, which yeah. to use those apparatus to mm. that uh, measurement, right? Yeah. So another example is uh, very very common use is uh, the medicines which we take. Mm. So we get a small cap along with that, and it will have graduated of a five ml, two point five ml, and Mm -hmm. and 10 ml length right like mm -hmm. okay so temperature so we saw that uh, most of the like we kind of apply in formulas using kelvin mm -hmm. okay basically all the formulas are with respect to kelvin and yeah and in the problems will sometimes get in celsius mm -hmm. and uh, we got to mindfully convert it into fahrenheit and we also saw that in uh, between Celsius, Celsius and Fahrenheit, so the zero degree mm -hmm. centigrade corresponds mm -hmm. to thirty two degree Fahrenheit, yeah. and the hundred and hundred degree centigrade corresponds to two hundred and Fahrenheit. Yeah, Fahrenheit. And similarly, on the Kelvin scale, it's two seventy three point one five Kelvin mm -hmm. corresponds to zero degree. Mm -hmm. And uh, 373 Kelvin corresponds to 100. Okay, yeah. so you just you just have to remember that uh, the difference. I think I think yesterday you already mentioned. Uh, I think you already remember that, right? Like 273.15 is the difference. You got to add 273.15. Yeah. The Celsius. Yeah, and this is what that formula is. Uh, so Fahrenheit is is equal to nine by five into Celsius plus thirty two. Okay. Yeah. So just remember this one format. Okay, mm -hmm. and then you can kind of quickly derive the other. Like if if uh, Fahrenheit is given and Celsius is asked for, you can always kind of like write this first, and then mm -hmm. do that uh, F minus thirty two. Yeah. Right, I mean five by nine into yeah five by nine into f minus thirty two the whole of f minus thirty two yeah. okay yeah f is equal to nine by five centigrade plus thirty two so just mem memorize this formula okay yeah and you know how to memorize so you say yeah. you say it to yourself without without seeing multiple times I actually saw these two yesterday uh, the Fahrenheit and the the ah, temperature bit. okay okay yeah so you memorize uh, the way you memorize is you say this 
you say this formula without seeing to yourself a couple of times okay <laughs> and then after a day again you try uh, i mean i mean do the same and after a week you again do the same the month you do the same okay yeah. so only in that recalling again and again mm. it stays in our yeah. memory and it stays mm and it will be helpful in our exam okay so it is interesting to know that temperature below 0 degree centigrade are possible in celsius scale but in kelvin scale negative temperature is not possible not possible okay so basically we uh so zero kelvin is kind of so very ideal and so very it's it's kind of not in not in reality state yeah okay so uncertainty in measurement mm -hmm. many a time uh, we deal with experimental data okay and uh, and also some errors in rounding off and things like that okay mm. uh, so we present the data realistically with certainty to the extent possible that's where in our exams typically i think your teachers would have said uh, maybe you can write the decimals till four for four places mm. or six places what are the instruction you received what are the no like in the decimals we yeah. we kind of approximate to some yeah so we round it off ah oh. okay yeah but yeah but in the i mean as you like in the higher up studies and research you will recognize that that rounding off errors but also mm. in in some of the applications are very very mm. yeah and uh, yeah okay so uh scientific notation so what do we have here planck's constant speed of light charges on small numbers of the above magnitude so basically we don't write the whole thing so what do you do we just take the approximate value of this so basically the whole thing into basically 10 power yeah yeah 10 power yeah okay. so the notation is uh, yeah. yeah i think yesterday you also mentioned uh, i mean i was looking at a, i was showing one big number and you are saying into 10 power 8 mm the 10 power 8 value of c yeah. okay yeah so uh, and again one of the other mistake which you often make us in the problem mm -hmm. when there are like this kind of numbers are given sometimes we kind of miss out on the power okay mm -hmm. so 10 power 3 in a hurry you may see it as 10 power 8 <laughs> uh and things like that yeah so that 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 power is another place where sometimes like we'll miss out mm -hmm. like 10 power minus 4 and we would have looked at it but now i'll be writing we'll think of it as 10 power 4 10 power minus 4 as 4 okay so mm. just pay a little more attention there mm. okay and the multiplication and division uh, do you have very good clarity on those uh, on this notations well if you multiply the tens with the powers you have to add the Power, and if you oh. divide it, it's like you need to subtract it. Yeah. So there is an x power x power m into x power n is equal to x power m plus n when you multiply oh, it. Oh, power m plus n, m, right? And uh, m minus x power m divided, m divided by x power n is. We have to subtract m minus n. Ah, oh, m minus n. right and we also see that uh, sometimes uh, like n could be higher in value which with the denominator mm. and yeah. that is where we get the 1 by x can also be expressed as x power minus 1 yeah minus 1 correct 
yes. like x power 0 divided by x power 1. So x power 0 is 1. Yeah. So it will be 1. Yeah. So it is x 1 by x is equal to x power minus 1. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Uh, similarly, in the addition, uh, you got to ensure that you have all those uh, at the same degree. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So when you have 10 power minus 2 and I mean, I mean, if you are doing this kind of subtraction, mm. okay, first you got to, I mean, 2.5 into 10 power minus 2 and then we then go and then 4.8 into 10 power minus 3. By the way, I'll just like zoom it a bit. Is this better? Yeah, I mean, I can see. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you got to ensure that you kind of take, I mean, you kind of bring it to the same order. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so you can see 10 power minus 3. So, mm -hmm. so it's like 1 by 10 power minus 3. So you kind of take 110 and then apply on 4.8. Yeah. Okay, so mm. 4.8 divided by 10 becomes 0 0.48, and that way we do the 10 minus 2. Correct? Okay. Are you comfortable with this arithmetic operations or should I explain a bit? I think I am. Uh, I think I am. Okay. Where do you usually make mistakes? Uh, in this operation, uh, I don't. I think if we focus enough and concentrate, I don't think you can go wrong unless it's some silly mistake. Okay, fine. Uh, so every experimental measure has some amount of uncertainty associated with it because of limitation of measuring instrument and the skill of the person making the measurement. Okay limitation of measuring instrument okay so that's the important thing because even the instruments as it ages so there's also mm -hmm. like wear and tear and uh, yeah and there are also uh, uh, I mean there could always be some limitation okay mm -hmm. we got to mm -hmm. understand those so on measuring mm -hmm. Okay, now look at this. The mass obtained is 9.42132. Mm. The mass obtained by an analytical balance mm. is slightly higher than the mass obtained by using a platform balance. Yeah. Therefore, digit 4 placed after decimal the measurement by platform balance was uncertain. Mm. Okay. So, the uncertainty in the experimental or calculated value is indicated by mentioning the number of significant figures. So significant figures are the meaningful digits which are known with certainty plus one, which is estimated or uncertain. Okay. And the uncertainty is indicated by writing the certain digits and the last uncertain digit. Thus, if you write as 11.2 milliliter, we say 11 is certain and 2 is uncertain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. T would be plus or minus one in the last digits. Okay. So unless otherwise stated, an uncertainty of plus or minus one in the last digit is always understood. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got that right. Mm -hmm. So when you see 11.2, it could be 11.3 or 11.1. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, but typically, I mean, when you do the math, when you do the calculations, you round up. Mm. Okay. So, uh, okay, here on all this, uh, the all non-zero digits are significant. So what we mean by that is to 280 oh, in whatever way you convert, you got to kind of retain the digits. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Especially in chemistry, it's very significant. Yeah. Uh, so that is what they are mentioning about. 
and uh, are two significant figures. And yeah, and zero between two non-zero digits are significant. Mm. And uh, zeros at the end or right of a number are significant. Yeah. So, so for one significant figure, one point zero into ten square for two significant figures, and one point zero zero into ten square for three significant figures. Mm. Typically, that is where in our currencies we kind of express it with two significant figures. Oh. Okay, so even you typically kind of see currencies being written as 0 0.00. Mm. As if you do any banking transaction, you will mm, yeah, yeah. recognize that. Mm. Okay, precision refers to the closeness of various measurements for the same quantity. Mm. Accuracy is the agreement of a particular value to the true value of the result. Mm. Okay, are you clear with this? Yeah. Closeness of various measurements for the same quantity. Precision, okay? Yeah. So if you measure something and if uh, again, okay, then you write down, and that is where in our labs we typically do multiple measurements, mm. multiple experiments. We conduct multiple experiments mm. more than once. But yeah, but in our school lab, sometimes uh, because of budget constraints, we will kind of um, just for experience, we get a hands on uh, look. I mean, feel uh, we do minimal set of experiments, but but yeah, but in the labs. In the research labs or or industrial labs, we do multiple experiments and then see how the measurements and uh, okay and then thereby you will uh, you, you will understand the precision okay yeah so if you measure something let's say the temperature you are measuring right and then it gives a value mm. now and we also recognize that it has a dependency on the instrument as well as our skill mm -hmm. correct yeah. so in another one minute we again measure mm. and again in, a, in one more minute we measure and another one more minute we measure yeah. okay so now if there is like a kind of a point one difference then you will i mean point one or point zero five like likewise if you see then you'll say okay i think it's it, uh, mm. it's kind of all are mm. close and you yeah. can trust, right? But if mm -hmm. it has a very wide range, then you will suspect oops, what's going on. Mm. Uh, I mean, something is wrong. Yeah. And accuracy is agreement of a particular value to the true value of the result. So the same way, right? We do it, we tweak our mm. clocks or do some yeah. time or our time mm. the watch. Okay, and then we we'll also then probably go to Google to see the whole clock, whether it's I mean whether our time is accurate. Mm. Or we may use another clock to set. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so now here is a data to illustrate precision and accuracy. Mm. Okay, now look at this data and tell me what are your inferences so we have student a got 1.95 and student b got 1.93 so shouldn't that be an accurate one because they've taken the middle no no basically it's a measurement is just like data is given here okay so to just to illustrate uh, what is the okay? So precision and accuracy. Basically, three students are doing the same measurement. Yeah. First time, first student measures one by nine five, and again same student measures one by nine three, and second yeah. student measures one point two, 
okay and then and then each of them are taking the average of their own measurements okay so these observations are neither precise nor accurate okay okay so we can see that so it's like six measurements have been taken right three students yeah. two times each six measurements and you can see that each time it's, it's different. different value yeah. that is why you say like these observations are neither precise nor accurate okay okay so the addition and subtraction of significant figures so this is another example of again another frequent lettering mistake you got to you got to write it down carefully align the decimals and then do the do the addition or multiplication yeah okay yeah so many times in mind some folks attempt or they kind of uh, I mean feel happy doing things in mind and, uh, and then we we'll see that it have missed so mm. it's okay oh uh, yeah so always write down the decimals point basically align those numbers and then do the addition yeah. carefully okay now this multiplication or uh, the decimal movements are you clear yeah So two point five into one point two five. Ah, you'll just do twenty five into one hundred and twenty five. Mm. And with the result, then you count how many like decimal places. Okay, one decimal place three. here and two decimal places here. Mm. So you will add three decimal places. So you will you will move like like from the last you move that many number of decimal places in the result. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so we got to keep it in mind. Uh, more the uh, more than five. Okay, so they have also kind of illustrated here. So this is good. Uh, they also like the, the textbook also explains the pressures of memory on that multiplication. Okay. dimensional analysis so there's a need to convert units from one system to the other factor label method or unit factor method or dimensional analysis the piece of metal is 3 inch represented by inch of long what is it length and sorry i can't hear you huh yeah can you repeat that i I, I'm one of the talking in the background. Okay, so the method in the dimensional analysis, call it factor label method or unit factor method or dimensional analysis. So let's look at this. Like a piece of metal is three inch represented, and what is its length in centimeter? Mm. Okay. So you have to convert it to Oh. Okay. So you know, so like, how do you do? One inch would be two point five centimeter. Yeah. So you multiply it with three. Ah. Oh. One inch is two point five centimeter. Yeah. So you thus equal to one and also equal to. So you multiply it by three. Three. Correct. So kind of know the yeah. range. Okay. Ah. Uh, so again, like the way they written, no, so always do this way. Okay, meaning write that as one inch, two point five centimeter. So three inch is so kind of multiply on both sides. Okay. Yeah. Are you clear with this, or should I explain this yeah, a bit? I'm, yeah, I'm clear with it. Okay. Jack contains two liter of milk. Calculate the volume of the milk in meter cube. Two liter of milk. Hmm. So I have to calculate it in meter cube. Yeah. Okay. So one liter is. In your notes. 
when do you work it out and tell me okay two liters of milk wait to meet a cube so one liter would be thousand ml so i have to convert liters to meters okay you got to memorize this things okay okay one liter equal to thousand centimeter ml. cube okay 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 thousand centimeter cube okay. and one meter equal to hundred centimeter yeah that. okay so it's so one meter is hundred centimeter. Hundred centimeters. Yeah. First unit factor okay. taken as so, a cube. Okay. So I'll just. Uh, So are you able to follow this? Yeah. One L. So yeah. one L is equal to thousand centimeter cube. Right. Okay. So it's not that. Okay. So thousand centimeter. Okay. Yeah. So one m, one liter equal to thousand centimeter cube. Yeah. One meter is hundred centimeter. Yeah. Okay. So you first one meter, hundred centimeter equal to. So this you can understand, right? You are just like yeah. rewriting it as hundred centimeter by one meter. Yeah. And to get Meter cube from the above unit factors, the first unit factor is taken and it is cubed. Mm. So yeah. you cube this, so you get one meter cube, mm. a 10 power six centimeter cube. Yeah. 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 Why is it 10 power six? 100 yeah, is 10 yeah, power two. Yeah, cubed. And two into three, right? So. Yeah. yeah x power m whole power n is x power m into n yeah 10 power 6 and we see that thousand now one l is thousand centimeter cube mm. correct yeah so you take so from here 10 power 6 in centimeter cube now you now you are kind of yeah, okay, hold on. I just clear this. Okay. So now two liter equal to two into thousand centimeter cube. Yeah. So two thousand centimeter cube. So two thousand centimeter cube. Two into thousand centimeter cube into yeah. One meter cube by ten power six. Ten power six centimeter cube. cube. Yeah. Because you already arrived, no? I mean, it has a value of one. Mm. Yeah. You are multiplying it by one. One meter cube by. Yeah. In order to eliminate. Yeah. So one meter by ten power six centimeter yeah. cube and uh, centimeter cube. And centimeter cube gets cancelled, mm. right? And then the three, I mean, three zeros will get cancelled. The three zeros here so it becomes 10 power cube, and two into mm. one, two meter cube, yeah, and two into 10 power minus three, yeah. So just write it down, and okay, so only then, like, you got to practice this, yes. Yeah, sure. So, did you write it down in your notes? I'm writing it down right now. Okay. Okay. 
so now there is also uh, there is also another way to do the same which is 1 meter is 100 cm which you know right i mean yeah, you know, yeah. once you do, you know this so 1 cm 10 pa minus 2 meter ha 10 power minus 2 meter yeah. so you just like substitute that here okay 10 power minus 2 meter and the whole cube okay are you following what i'm saying yeah yeah okay you would get the same one yeah ha so you will get the same yeah okay so now the loss of chemical combinations okay. so the five basic loss okay so remember that okay the combination of elements to form compounds is governed by five basic laws mm. what are those five basic laws yeah, one is related to mass okay ha huh? mass yeah and then the next is related to properties proportions basically the volume okay how much okay yeah and uh, the multiple basically the definite definite proportion okay yeah and then multiple proportions okay and gay loses law of gaseous volumes mm. and avogadro's law okay okay yeah so law of conservation of mass what is it the mass is conserved <laughs> yeah matter can neither be created nor destroyed okay okay mm. so you always uh, have to remember on this because you we actually look for how where it went mm. okay yeah so while doing i mean if you are taken uh, something of certain quantities and and you are doing a combustion reactions but now but now when you see a change in the weight change yes. in the mass mm. so which means something has happened okay yeah. either with respect to the state of the matter okay mm. uh yeah so, uh, that is the that is one thing that there is no net change in mass Mm. Uh, due to the okay. process okay okay so all physical and chemical change mm. so that much mass should have converted into like state okay mm. and law of definite promotion um, definite pr proportions proportions yeah a given compound always contains exactly the same proportion of elements by weight okay, okay. same proportion of elements by weight so any natural uh, sample percentage of copper mm. uh percentage of co copper 51.35 and percentage of carbon 9.75 and percentage of oxygen 38.91 okay so irrespective of the source a given compound always contain same elements combined together in the same proportion by mass mm. the validity of this law has been confirmed by various experiments mm. so it's called law of definite composition <laughs> and what is law of multiple proportions 
Two elements can combine, combine to, form to form more than one compound. The yes. masses of one element that combine with the fixed mass of the other element are in the ratio of small whole numbers. Okay. 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 Yeah. Small whole numbers. Mm. That is what we see. Yeah. Water and hydrogen peroxide and mm. and in fact, this law is where how like. Uh, like we could uh, deal with the uh, moles in the ratios. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the simple ratio, like you take this much of, you take two gram of hydrogen, you take sixteen gram of oxygen, and and we realize that there's an eighteen gram of water. Mm. Water. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And similarly. For an another compound, two gram and thirty-two gram of oxygen forms another compound. Okay, mm. so it doesn't. Uh, uh, so this is like the definite law of multiple proportion as it definitely combines. Okay, with the fixed mass of other element. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So you you don't get here. 18 gram of water and then plus hydrogen and on and oxygen hanging around. Yeah. Okay, so you get hydrogen peroxide. And now the same proportion, right? Like 2 gram, 16 gram, 18 gram. So this mm. ratio yeah. okay, is kind of static. Okay. What we mean by that? If you take 4 gram of mm. oxygen. Okay, yeah. if you take four gram of oxygen mm. and thirty-two gram of sorry, if you take four gram of hydrogen, hydrogen. and thirty-two gram of oxygen, what do you get? Thirty-six grams of hydrogen peroxide. Sorry, water. Oh, or hydrogen peroxide. You got it right. Yeah. 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 So that ratio doesn't change. So mm. that is the law of multiple multiple proportions. Yeah. Gay Lussac's law when gases combine mm. are produced in a chemical reaction, they do so in a simple ratio by volume, provided all gases are the same temperature and pressure. Okay. okay? Mm. So, again, simple ratio by volume. Mm. Provided all gases are at the same temperature and pressure. Yeah. So, in this uh, thermodynamics uh, uh, related, uh, we always you got to remember uh, to kind of look at temperature, pressure, volume. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got to look for it very, very carefully in the problems. Yeah. What are they, what is mentioned about temperature, pressure, volume? Mm. Okay, yeah. because even uh, when there are the formulas change depending on that, what is mean, what is constant between two states or mm. between two scenarios, mm. I think you got to be clear and, and make note of this. Okay. So hydrogen plus oxygen is water and it, it, it bears a simple ratio of 2 is to 1. 2 higher times of hydrogen and oxygen to give 100 ml of water. Mm. So again, if you look at this, 100 ml of hydrogen combined with 50 ml of oxygen to give 100 ml of water yeah. vapor. So the volumes of hydrogen and oxygen which combine bear a simple ratio of 2 is to 1. Mm. Okay, so the gases are at the same temperature and pressure. That is something you got to recognize. Okay. okay. So, and again, this is actually the law of definite, pro definite proportions by volume. Mm. The law of definite proportion stated earlier was with respect to mass. The Gay-Lussac's yeah. law was explained properly by the work of Avogadro in 1811. Mm. 
So what did Avogadro propose? Equal so volume. volumes of all gases at the same temperature and pressure should contain equal number of molecules. Okay. Okay. Equal number of molecules, not mm. mass. Okay. Mass could vary. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Two volumes of hydrogen combined with one volume of oxygen to give two volumes of water without leaving any unreacted off. So, I mean, why these are all very important is like you may I mean, randomly take two kilograms of oxygen mm -hmm. and uh, one, one kilogram of hydrogen. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you might wonder like why this, uh, I mean, that's not happening to the expectation. Because it could be a different temperature. Both yeah. of it would be a different temperature or both of it could be a different pressure. Pressure. Okay. But yeah, but all gases at same temperature and pressure should contain equal number of molecules. So again, okay. these are some of the observations I did. I'd like the, the first person to do those observations and mm. attend several experiments, validations, and they published. Okay. okay. Yeah. So now, now everyone knows H two O is water. Yeah. It's also in in some memes. Yeah. <laughs> so each box contains equal number of molecules. Figure one dot nine. Mm. So considering the molecules to be polyatomic. Okay. If hydrogen and oxygen were considered as diatomic, then the above results are easily understandable. However, Dalton and others believed at that time that atoms of the same kind cannot combine and molecules of oxygen hydrogen containing two atoms did not exist. Mm. Avogadro's proposal was published in the French. Okay. Yeah. So here is one volume of hydrogen, one volume of hydrogen plus one volume of oxygen. So basically two volume, okay, two volumes of water vapor. So atomic and molecular masses. What's the difference between atom and molecule? Atom is just a single element and molecule is a combination of elements. Ha, ah, okay. Or like two, yeah. Okay. No, I mean, in, it could be more than two also. Yeah, more than two. Okay. Combination. Combination, so yeah. In 19th century, scientists could determine the mass of one atom related to another. So the present system of atomic masses is based on carbon-12 as a standard and has been agreed upon in 1961. Here, carbon-12 is one of the isotopes of carbon and can be represented as 12, that 12 prefix C. So 12 is assigned a mass of exactly 12 atomic mass unit, AMU, and masses of all other atoms are given related to the standard. One atomic mass unit is defined as a mass e exactly equal to one twelfth of the mass of one carbon atom. Mm -hmm. yeah, I just have to remember this. One atomic mass unit is one twelfth of the mass of yeah. one carbon. Okay. Okay, and uh, 1.630 into 10 power minus 24 grams, 1 mm. AMU. What is 1 AMU? 
1.66056 into 10 power of minus 24 grams. So it is also the one twelfth of the mass of one carbon. Yeah, one twelfth. Yeah. Okay. So in fact, it's just not one carbon. It's a carbon twelve. This is yeah. isotopes of carbon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's an isotope of. Okay. Average atomic mass. So the following three isotopes is related to abundance and masses. Each of them. Mm. So what is the key, key message of the average atomic mass? We yeah. just have to recognize on the about the isotopes. Yeah. Okay, yes. Second isotopes and also the atomic mass varies. Mass. What is the molecular mass? Sum of atomic masses of elements present in a molecule. Multiplying the atomic mass of each element by the number of its atoms and adding them together. Mm. Okay. Molecular mass. Mm. I think this is straightforward, right? Yeah. Kind of understand the number of atoms and multiplying mm. each atom's atomic mass mm. to get the total. Yeah. So methane contains one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms can be obtained as you multiply. What is you? What? I'm sorry, you? What is you here? Is that the same as um, AMU? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Short form of mass unit. Mass unit. Okay. So C, one C value plus four into and of the hydrogen H. atomic mass unit. Yeah. Okay. Sodium chloride do not contain discrete molecules as their constituent units. And such compounds, positive and negative chloride ion entities, are arranged in a three dimensional structure as shown. So, this is again a typical packing of mm. sodium and chloride ions. Yes. So, in sodium chloride, one sodium ion is surrounded by six sodium ion and vice versa. Okay. What does vice versa mean? The other way around. Like uh, one chlorine would be surrounded by six sodium. Okay. So the other, like like the corresponding, the neighboring molecule. Hmm? Yeah. The formula such as NaCl is used to calculate the formula mass instead of molecular mass as in the solid state sodium chloride does not exist as a single entity. Okay. That's the formula mass of sodium chloride is atomic mass of sodium plus atomic mass of chlorine. Mm. Are you following this part? Yeah. Okay. N A C L. Calculate the molecular mass of glucose C six H twelve O six. So six into C six. So six uh, into yes. atomic mass of carbon plus carbon twelve into atomic mass of hydrogen plus six into Atomic mass of Okay. Mole concept and molar masses. So, what is that? Uh, so, we one dozen for 12 items, core for 20 items. Gross for 144 items. 
So we uh, use the symbol mole. One mole contains exactly what is this One. number? Avogadro number. Ah, oh. Avogadro number. Yeah. Okay. So the amount of substance of the system is a measure of the number of specified elementary units. So the elementary entity may be an atom, a molecule, an ion, an electron, any other particle or specific group of particles. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but we got to be clear that one mole of a substance always contains the same number of entities, no matter what the substance may be. Mm -hmm. The mass of a carbon atom was determined by a mass spectrometer. One mole of carbon weighs 12 grams. The number of atoms in it is equal to. So, one mole of carbon weighs 12 grams. Yeah. Okay, so the number of atoms in it is equal to. So, one mole has that Avogadro number, correct? So, you yeah. divide it. Okay. So are you seeing how this is done? Okay. So mass of a carbon 12 atom mm. is this. Okay. Yeah. And so for 12 gram, you divide that. Okay, any questions so far? No. Or any doubts? No, not really. Okay. So the, the number of entities in one mole is so important that it is given as, okay, so I'm going to draw a constant. The honor of Avogadro. One mole of hydrogen atoms, 6.022 more atoms. One mole of water molecule, 6.022 of. Again, always be clear on what is that one mole represent, okay? Mm -hmm. Whether it's rep representing atoms or molecules, or ions, okay? okay? Easy to know mass of one mole of a substance of the quantity. The mass of one mole of substance in grams is, is called its molar mass. Okay, so the mass of one mole of a substance in grams is called its molar mass. Okay. Yeah. So it it contains the same number of molecules or number of atoms. Mm. But because now it's like different properties, right? Mm. It's all like different uh, atoms or different molecules. So the, it has different masses. Mm. Let's say molar mass in grams is numerically equal to atomic molecular formula mass in U. Mm. So molar mass of water is 18.02 gram per mole. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is molar mass? It is uh, the mass of one mole of a substance in grams. Oh. Okay. And percentage composition. Yeah. What is the percentage of particular element present in a compound? It's the first mm. question when, when something is given. Mm. What is its formula or what are its constitutions? So when, when a substance is given to understand, mm. the first question we'd ask to find out is what is its formula, what are its constitution, and in what ratio are they present in the given compound? Mm. <laughs> Okay, can you think of an application for this? Um, 
isn't it what we usually do we take the mass and we divide it by the total no, mass practical and... application oh practical application hmm. practical application as in the percentage composition yeah like where is it applied in chemistry chemistry or in our real life where do that we be... where do we find this ratio Oh. in many play in many places okay in what ratio are they present in the given compound okay have you heard of like like the food uh, okay the, yeah yeah uh, i mean mixing of other things into the food yeah yeah you need yeah yeah okay when you bake and stuff not bake yeah yeah the bake but in the powder right like in the in the chili powder they may make some other compound okay low cost compound okay so in order to um increase their profit okay these are the frauds that happen yeah yeah the, yeah okay similarly okay. the gold okay if you take gold to yeah. sell the first thing who more buying your gold uh, i mean it could be for a bank loan or yeah. or it could be a shop who kind of takes and i mean who kind of buys gold and gives you the money the mm. jewelry shop the the first thing they do is to understand the composition of yeah yeah it like how pure gold. it actually is exactly so they do some tests on it yeah okay so basically whether the given sample contains the same percentage of elements as present in a pure sample so they will ask you for the carrot and you will mm -hmm. see some carrot value and they will test to see whether it's same yeah since water contains okay let's understand it by taking the example of so what are we trying to understand in this section the composition the percentage composition yeah percentage composition the percentage composition of both these elements can be calculated as follows mass percentage of an element equal to mass of the element in the compound into 100 divided by molar mass of the compound mm. why because in order to find the percentage ha huh. you have okay yeah. so in order to find the percentage of an element mm. so element is one single thing right yeah Mm. and molar mass of the compound what is molar mass one the mass of one mole of a substance ha huh. mass of one mole yeah so when we know the molar mass of the compound mm. it's a mass of one mole okay and uh, and understanding what is the mass of the element in the compound and mm. we divided divide that mm. okay yeah. so the mass percentage of hydrogen is equal to so if a uh, mass percentage of hydrogen is given as 11.18 okay now there could be also like this kind of problems mass percentage of hydrogen is 11.18 okay. what is the mass of hydrogen in the compound okay okay yeah. so from this equation mass percentage equal to mass of the element in the compound which is what to be found correct mm. divided by molar mass of the compound into 100 now mass percentage is given 11.18 is given yeah yeah and molar mass of the compound is known i think they may given okay. the table or like reference yeah mm. and yeah and you back calculate to find what is the mass yeah okay any question so far any questions hello looks like a lost you